welcome on behalf of Peripatetic Philosophy to our uh, Introduction to Philosophy course. Neither ethics, philosophy, or religion, or logic. I am your host, Tougher. And here we are, where are we again? We're on the Acropolis. Welcome, you see the Parthenon right there, which means virgin in honor of the virgin goddess of wisdom for which this city is named, Athens, Greece. You can't see it right now on the other side. I think you can see a little of the ocean. Down there is the Piraeus, the main port, and as the first words of the Republic, I went down to the Piraeus. So in the next uh, few clips, we're going to be talking about some basics of our philosophy course. We're going to hit Mars Hill and the Agora, where Socrates did his work. If we get time, we'll go to Plato's Academy, where Plato taught his students, namely Aristotle. So those of you in ethics, we'll spend a lot of time on Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. And thank you, and welcome, 2019, May, Greece. No problem, Larry. Welcome back. I want to introduce one of our texts, Plato. So depending on which course you're in, we're going to deal with a lot of these things. So those of you who have an introduction to philosophy, we're going to read the Euthyphro, which took place down in the Agora over the hill uh, in front of King Archon's court. The Apology, which took place again in the Agora. And the Crito, which took place in a prison, which we'll take you to later to show you up on the hill. And we'll read bits of the Phaedo, which is the death scene of Socrates. Those of you in ethics, we're going to spend a lot of time on Crito, civil disobedience, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. We just wanted to give you a shot of the Rectheon, where on the left, supposedly Socrates' father is a stonecutter working on those things. Back in a minute. Thank you. You ready? Behind me, you will see a better view of the Pirates. So we have the ocean and Philippopolis Hill right there. Socrates Prison is down here. We'll take you down there in a minute. What uh, it's one of the, the key question of Plato's Republic is what is justice? What is righteousness? Greek word dikosuni. And for all of us, both in ethics and intro to philosophy, we care about this question. As Socrates said in that, we were talking about no small matter, but how we should live. What should we value? So we'll join, we'll join us in a minute when we're downhill on Mars Hill. Thank you. That's you. All right, over here around the corner. Come on down. It's okay. You'll see uh, Mars Hill. Joyer and look at the uh, oh, plaque. Mars Hill? Mars Hill is this big rock down here. Yeah, what's that about? <laughs> it's uh, Acts 17. Okay. In the New Testament, you have Paul interacting with the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers down here. So, we'll keep. What's the Bible? Thank you. <laughs> so, we show the kids Mars Hill where we're going to resume interacting down yonder. Welcome. I want to tell you some of the rules of the class, which I think we can be find inspiration from the Areopagus or Mars Hill here. So over here you see this passage from Acts 17. where the Christian Apostle Paul came and met the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers and all these guys believe crazy different things but what I love about them they had both sharp minds and tender hearts and even though they disagreed 
They all sat down and talked and listened to one another. So in our philosophy class, we are always going to disagree about everything. Most people say you can't talk about politics or religion, but if you have a sharp mind and a tender heart, we can talk about everything and just disagree and that's that. I also want to talk about the principle of charity, where if someone says something to you and you have an interpretation, is that a mean, is she trying to be mean to me? Or was she just saying that? Or was that a racist remark or not racist? If you're on the fence, you always go with the best interpretation. So as a principle of love and charity, that's part of having a tender heart. So I hope you guys will enjoy this class and you'll see that if you take these principles outside of the classroom, you can discuss anything with anybody, as long as you have that tender heart. All right, we will resume in a few minutes up on top of the Areopagus, if you want to come on. All right, what you are standing in front of is Mars Hill, where we're technically on, the Areopagus, that you'll find in Act 17 we just mentioned. Now down here, all the action happened. You'll see the Temple of Hephaestus at one end of the Athenian Agora. This was the marketplace where Socrates birthed philosophy. Well, it's made it more popular. If you look down here, you'll see the recreated stoa of, uh, but basically this is where Socrates did all his work, asking questions and living the out the uh, thing that it was in front of the temple at the Delphi, know thyself. So Socrates was all about testing all of your beliefs, your most cherished beliefs about how do we know things, what is virtue, what is the good life, what is knowledge, what is justice, what is holiness. And because of that, as we'll read in the Apology, this was why Socrates was killed in 399 B.C. Because, guess what? People in power do not like to be questioned. So, as we mentioned before, the Euthyphro takes place in front of the Temple of Hephaestus in a place called King Archon's Court, which is where religious crimes were tried. And then next to it, closer to us, is approximately where the place where Socrates would have had his trial, where the Apology took place. This same place, 400 years later is also where Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, came in Acts 17. He found an inscription down there to an unknown God. And what I like about Paul, he was in a strange place with a strange religion, yet he found ways to meet people and hold hands with them. Oh yeah, you said to an unknown God. And also, Paul quotes a couple different philosophers like Aratus in that same passage where he says, in him we move, we live and move and have our being. So I do love that about Paul. He was able to quote Greek philosophers and begin his conversation with the Epicureans and Stoics, showing both sharp mind and a tender heart and a desire to hold hands with people that he ultimately disagreed with. All right, we'll next show you Socrates' prison where Crito takes place, the question of civil disobedience, or when is it okay to disobey the laws of the state? We've seen this throughout history. Um, we have it also in the book of Acts, where Peter and John, they disobeyed the Sanhedrin. When they said, quit talking about Jesus, they said, forget it. We saw this with Dietrich Bonhoeffer in World War II. We saw it with the abolitionist movement in the United States of America with the Underground Railroad that went through Cincinnati, Ohio. And in the 1950s and 60s, the Civil Rights Movement in the South and so on. And we see it today with different branches of government, Supreme Court going against the Constitution, President going against the Constitution. And we have questions of, well, sanctuary cities and different cities and states who are going against federal laws. So you'll be the judge We'll look at Socrates' arguments in his case. Should he escape Athens and leave his unjust sentence, or should he stay in prison, where she chose to do and eventually died by drinking hemlock? All right. 
two possible locations of Socrates Prison. One is down the hill, but the cooler one is over on the Philippopolis Hill, which we'll go to it a little bit. It's just cooler because they got, you'll see. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Welcome. This is one of the possible sites where Socrates was in prison for uh, a few weeks before he was executed by Hemlock. And this is the coolest place. Pink's Hill is over there. Cool Papa's Hill monuments up here. But I like this little spot. So in class, we'll debate whether or not Crito was right. Where since Socrates was unjustly accused, Crito said, look, I bribed the guards, I could get you out of town, I'd get, out of, get you out of Athens, Socrates, get you somewhere away. You've had such an impact on us, teaching us philosophy, teaching us to love wisdom, to know ourselves. And he said, also, what kind of a father leaves his three kids? He's like, you're of a father and your friends. Why wouldn't you listen to your friends and escape and continue teaching them? So Crito paid the guards and had the escape route. But Socrates said, no, oh, he, he said he's staying because he does not want to disrespect the city of Athens and its laws, which he says we should love them like we love a mother or father. Even though our mother and father are not perfect, we should still respect them because if we start this disobedience, it will cause chaos in society. All right, there's more to the story, but we'll examine those both in uh, our classes and you guys will come down where you will. All right, thank you very much. This uh, concludes our tour of Athens and our introduction to our philosophy course.